All right, thank you very much. Um, as introduced, my name is Zoheb. I'm a postdoc at the um, Center for Infectious Disease Genomics and One Health at the Simon Fraser University in Vancouver, Canada. Um, the title is a bit of a mouthful, so I'm just gonna say the gist of it is that I'm going to present to you a framework which we have been developing over the last two years for the COVID-19 pandemic response and how uh, Nextflow is enabling us to go further into pandemic preparedness, uh, being, being more pathogen agnostic. So let me see if I can use this laser. Yeah, okay, great. So I'd like to start with um, emphasizing that this is, uh, I, I'm presenting here as a project leader, but, but there's, uh, there's a, this frameworks like these takes a village to build, and I have so many people to thank. Um, starting with my lab members, my advisor, uh, I would like to highlight two, until recently, master students, Iwan and Madeline, who have been really instrumental in developing the front end and the, and the data standards with me. Um, and then um, I'd also like to thank uh, people from the COARNET, which is the Coronavirus Rapid Response Network in Canada. Um, there's a subgroup, CAMEO, and um, Paul, especially, who's been spearheading the functional annotation part, which I'm going to talk about it, uh, shortly. And finally, last but not least, most important part was our uh, uh, collaboration that we early on wanted to establish with the Public Health Agency of Canada. And uh, Gary, who's the chief bioinformatician there, who, who's been uh, really a huge support in terms of not only giving us the uh, vision, uh, helping us how the public health labs want this data to be summarized. Um, so that's been a great collaboration. Um, and with that, I would like to start with a bit of a story. Everything starts with a story, right? So this is uh, two years ago when um, COVID-19 surveillance ecosystem, we've seen a lot of tools. This is kind of a figure that you might have seen, even if you're not working in the same ecosystem, you have probably seen in media. This is the next strain, very famous uh, phylogeny-based, looking at how the SARS-CoV-2 evolves around the world. Um, there's also a version of, uh, similar version of it, I shouldn't say the version, but it's a, it's a COVIZU, another tool developed from the CAMEO group. Um, then there are more mutation-specific tools, uh, something like COV Spectrum um, and uh, COV MT, and, and, and also uh, very well-known outbreak.info that contains all these mutations, variants, and um, and, and um, uh, some metadata attached to it. So what we thought was there was a bit of a gap where um, the link between these mutations and its functional significance was, um, was missing, so um, in, specifically in SARS-CoV-2 surveillance. So what we wanted to fill this gap was have a tool that would be uh, interactive visualization and overlay the functional significance of each mutation so that you can understand which mutation is having an impact, and what, what are those mutations that be, uh, that are common between different variants, uh, but have a significant impact on on the uh, so to say the, the biology of virus really. So the goal, as I mentioned, was interactive heat map centric visualization that combines genetic mutations, uh, lineage information, and the curated functional integration, which is the key uh, to study the evolution of COVID-19. Um, so we believe that. Um, by, by overlaying this information, one can understand the, uh, the, Im the impact of that mutation in terms of transmissibility of the disease, uh, disease severity, immune escape, and other uh, pharmaceutical um, effectiveness. So we came up with this structure, which is uh, really three standalone components, uh, a front-end visualization, uh, functional annotation, uh, which is manually curated, and a genomics workflow, which is where Nextflow comes in. So uh, the front end uh, is written in Dash and Plotly frameworks, um, but I want to highlight this um, function annotation component, which is really an important part because what we've been trying to do over the last two years is to scan the literature um, through various sources, including PubMed and BioArchive and all these different resources, government dashboards, um, even social media commentary, because I think even though it's, it's very difficult to standardize that, but it's, it is one of the most important and, and uh, really um, helpful resources that people have been tweeting about different variants and mutations, and we've been trying to uh, keep track of that. We developed early on a curation guideline for our curators to work on and curate all the information that is coming in, um, and then uh, put into a flat file-based data, database. Um, the front-end uh, visualization would, would then view that, but also then this, the back-end genomics workflow, which, which is where I was leading, is to develop this um, NF-core-based tools and, and also some Nextflow written custom tools to, to develop a more structure where we had one workflow, we named it as COVID-MVP, so this was at the time called COVID-MVP, MVP stands for Mutations, Variants, and Prevalence, as much as I just want to keep MVP itself. 
Um, and there are three sub workflows um, at, the at the start of it with 30 plus modules that were handling this data to process a population level um, uh, study and then produce all those mutation into visualization. So um, in order to give you the essence of what the genomics workflow was doing, I think it's important to show the value of the data, how we package it, how we process it. So um, to first start with the front end visualization, this is what uh, most of the people are interacting with. So this is a bit of a heat map that gives you access to a um, lot of these features that we are processing through the, in the backend genomics workflow and then keeping it as a package. So um, you can see some key features like all the sequences that are coming out are, are grouped by lineages and their and the variants classified them on the y-axis. You also get the number of sequences on the other side of the y-axis. There's a, um, this is more like scrolling back and front. You can see all the uh, nucleotide position and the corresponding minus it position. And the most important bit is right here. When you um, uh, hoop over a specific cell, which is right here, the mutation, you can see the mutation name, uh, the reference and alternate allele, and also the functions that are associated with that mutation, which was the key, but what we wanted to achieve in order to have this exploratory analysis, exploratory tool that gives you um, um, immediate idea of what mutations are, are increasing over the time in a certain lineage, and um, what kind of impact they're having. Then we kept on, you know, more engineering, uh, b b adding more features like uh, similar color framework that Nextrain has for easier um, interaction with the, for, the, for the users. Then we had the idea of um, uploading directly a fast A sequence uh, that would contain a, a, a consensus sequence or a genome um, to process it and visualize inside your um, already available sequences. Um, we also added a function for uh, surveillance reports uh, that, that are downloadable. So. Um, this is a bit of an animation of how this tool works. I didn't want to do a live demo. I'm not that brave, so I'm just going to do it as an as a, uh, animation. So you've got a search index built in. You can search a specific mutation, and, and the heat map scroll to that specific mutation. Um, for example, in this case, the R3460, you can see all the variants that have that specific mutation. Hope over, you can see what kind of function they're attached with, associated to. and. Um, then there's, uh, once you click it, then you see the literature attached to it, which is also key because we want to keep the evidence source inside this uh, heat map as well. Once you click the cell, you get all the publications and, and the evidence source that are attached to it. And then you download the surveillance reports, as you can see, uh, into a zip folder. Okay, so with that as a, as a, um, a visualization, keeping that in mind, the next part was this function annotation. So um, it was called as POKE. Um, the structure of that uh, platform is that we keep um, every single file uh, named by a gene or a protein name and then a functional category. Uh, then keep, um, if you look into one of them, for example, you can see uh, there's a, probably not that well on the screen, but there's, there's a chunk for each mutation where you get your functional description, a very specific function uh, that you have extracted out that from the evidence, be it a publication or, or from uh, the dashboards. And then the source itself, uh, could be a DOI, a URL, or, uh, or the, it's mo mostly the URL link, uh, and then the mutation, one or many mutations. So in, in several cases, there are multiple mutations that are associated with the same function, so they are just uh, delimited by a semicolon to, to highlight that there are multiple mutations that in this study. And this goes on for all genes and proteins for SARS-CoV-2, and then uh, different functional categories. To summarize this, currently we have uh, five high-level um, phenotypes or, or the categories, which are uh, medicine, uh, cellular, and molecular, uh, as, as an example, and then subcategories of functions uh, could be pharmaceutical effectiveness, uh, it could be uh, tissue-specific neutralization, and, and all those different subcategories. And we have multiple evidence types that I mentioned, peer-reviewed publications, uh, preprints, case studies, and so on, so on. But what we wanted to do was take a step further and develop a spec to, for the function annotation because we, we didn't want to only limit the, the source that we have as much as we want to continue developing that source, but there's a lot of overhead in terms of manual curation. We wanted to use um, our collaboration with the FAGE, which is Public Health Alliance of Genomic Epidemiology. In case you don't know, this is, um, there's a data structures group which works on defining these specs. So we are working with them to develop these specs based on the AMR detection um, and use that for anyone who would like to overlay their own function annotation on top of the heat map. Um, that's where, where we're going with. So this, this spec will be released soon, and this will be available uh, along with the, uh, with the tool itself. 
So this will allow um, all kinds of different functional annotations, including the viral drug resistance data or antibody uh, data, anything that you would like to overlay, as long as the format is, uh, is used. Okay, now comes this uh, genomics workflow. So we started with uh, you know, some of these components, um, uh, pre-processing, quality control, variant calling. I'm not gonna go into the details of the tools. I'm sure everyone is a bit, uh, familiar with these tools that are, most of these are available through NF Core. So I've been using those, and, and if not, then we develop some, um, some tools, uh, including some of those custom modules uh, that require integration of um, contextual data. Uh, I think that has been the, the key, cha the key um, uh, first of all, the challenge, and also something that we've been working on to, uh, to make the next flow modules that can take the contextual information and the genomic information and, and merge them together. So once you've got this pre-processing, quality control, and variant calling, you come to this VCF file, which can direct, then go into our three main annotation sub-workflows, the contextual annotation, uh, the mutation annotation, and then the surveillance reports. So we generate two kinds of surveillance reports, one for the machine-readable, more JSON structure, um, and TSV files, and then also a PDF-based summarized uh, surveillance report, which is much more for the public health um, folks. So that's where our collaboration with public health has, has been really helpful. So essentially you have another entry point uh, where if you wanna skip the whole QC and, and uh, variant calling and you have a VCF files, then you can just use that VCF file and get the annotation. Now the structure of surveillance reports, um, you've got two kind of main components. The first one is the indicator. So this is where our, our collaboration with the, uh, the FACT, Public Health Agency, helped us to find out these indicators that they look for some, for example, infection severity or the vaccines or the monoclonal antibodies, and then subgroup our functional categories that we had in our annotation into those uh, indicators, and then list out all the mutations that we see in a certain population, in a, in a jurisdiction, in a time frame, and then see these are the mutations that are linked to these functions and, and the indicators, and then go into a detail of each specific mutations. That's where you can see the mutation, what subcategory they are from, which lineages do you see these mutations in, um, and the citation for the source of evidence and uh, the frequency of that mutation. Um, in order to capture all this data, we, we, we went with the structure called genome variant file, GVF file, and designed a spec which would allow us to capture all this information, including the genomic and on the contextual information. Um, and, and essentially, we're going to also um, release all the specs for this, what, how, how we are um, capturing this data, and what kind of um, key pair values that we are filling up using the genomics analysis workflow. Okay, now to the, back to the topic, which is basically, um, once we had this system, everything established, now we want to take it a step further. So we wanted to um, move towards pandemic preparedness, which is um, moving from COVID MVP to a virus MVP. So first step was um, how um, um, we wanted to move to data and pathogen agnostic. And this is uh, essentially the choice of, uh, and I, I'm really uh, thankful that at the time I pushed uh, to use Nextflow at the time because um, uh, all these characteristics that we've been hearing for the last two days of Nextflow and NF Core, they kind of came quite handy because, uh, for example, the fast prototyping that helped me to prototype these uh, modules uh, that I was, I was building for this integration um, of contextual data into genomic data uh, the reproducibility and, and the portability, because the idea of building this tool was not at all to just uh, keep it in our lab. We wanted to, for the public health folks to use it, we wanted everyone to use it, so the idea of this portability uh, really helped to, to uh, scale up. So um, now this is an example of how the backend workflow, the way it captures data, we can group differently to become data agnostic. So the same data that we were looking earlier now is grouped into weeks epi-weeks rather than the lineages. And this is really important because now you can see uh, the same mutation, R3463, increasing week on week. So this is an example from the end of 2022 to the start of 23, where uh, this XBB 1.5, if you're not familiar, this is a recombinant uh, Omicron subvariant that was really on the rise. And this mutation linked to the ACE2 receptor binding was increasing week on week. So um, this ability of the workflow to define that we want to group data by time and then uh, have the same specs load up. Um, the visualization is completely uh, agnostic to, to what kind of grouping is done, and this allows you to see specific mutations week on week. Uh, but this was not enough, so, uh, so we wanted to add one more uh, um, component because 
uh, we've, we've seen that over the last few months and, and, and a year probably, a uh, lot of surveillance has focused towards, towards wastewater surveillance now. So we're going towards the, the environment sampling and looking at the wastewater rather than the clinical sample. So we added another uh, component which was specifically for the wastewater. Um, so now you can process the wastewater data and bring the same VCF file into annotation and, and visualize very similarly. So in this case, your, your um, y, uh, y uh, axis right here is these are the samples, um, and this is a similarity data to show the, how it can work, uh, but we've been also using this as a production instance. And then you can also connect with the lineages itself to see the difference between the wastewater sample, which is, as a reminder, it's a, it's a mixed lineage sample. So you can see certain mutations uh, in, in those uh, wastewater data compared to the cl clinical um, data that you have in lineages. Right, so once we had this um, lineage group uh, visualization, um, time-based, and, and then wastewater as well, so we wanted to move towards pathogen agnostic. So what was initially COVID MVP then turned into virus MVP, and now we, we started to move towards other viruses as a, as a pandemic preparedness. So instead of three, uh, one workflow of COVID MVP, now we have three. Uh, we started to um, developing a POX, MPOX specific instance, which is a POX MVP, and and the next one we're working on is the is the a for the influenza, for the called as flu MVP. So again, uh, in this case, the sub workflows are expanded, modules are expanded. Now we have over 50 modules in this workflow. Uh, three main workflows um, using a plug and play approach. We've heard this term a lot in the last couple of days. Uh, we still want to do that as all the modules be as part of puzzles and then the over overarching uh, workflows can connect them into a logic that works for that specific virus. So this is an example of um, how quickly we can spin off into different viruses. So, the, so we, um, we challenge ourselves to, to uh, create this uh, visualization for the, um, create this data specifically for the POX MVP and, and in this case, this data again um, used from the ENA um, the same genomics workflow with the different um, specs can be uh, loaded up into similar visualization. And now we're working towards uh, the curation of uh, functions for MPOX and, uh, and then taking it further to the flu. So now the question is how to set up this uh, whole three uh, independent components. Um, so what we wanted to achieve was um, link all these structures with a common file, which is the JSON file that holds all the key for, for the visualization part, for the genomic analysis, and also for the functional annotation. So what we did was essentially create a JSON file from the GFF file that you get from the NCBI for each, uh, based on the NCBI taxon, in this case, the um, SARS-CoV-2 and, and MPOX, and hold all this information, um, including the, the different genes and proteins, and uh, what color colors are, uh, it's slightly difficult to probably see, see here, but um, information about the protein uh, and, and uh, the starting point, end points of each protein, the, the colors that we want to add to the bar. So everything is, in, in, is captured in this JSON file. And this JSON file is connecting all three components together. Um, and the workflow uh, has a smaller sub-workflow called configure virus MVP, and that, could, that basically generates this JSON file uh, based on the NCBI taxon provided. So in summary, um, this virus MVP is an interactive framework to process and visualize pathogen and data agnostic uh, mutations, to overlay the functional annotation that we are creating or any other functional annotation based on the specs that we are developing, and then analyze both uh, the uh, clinical or the um, environmental samples in wastewater form. And you can also group the data by uh, different variables, including the lineage, time, region, and see um, different, uh, and explore the same data by different, um, uh, different perspectives. The backend genomics workflow is also integrated and containerized, uh, which allows uploading the sequences to the front-end visualization and processing on the go, so that you can see your new sequences added to the same library that you have already built. And uh, there's an option to uh, download the surveillance reports, as I mentioned earlier. So lastly, I would like to talk about this um, deployment and dissemination, so what we have done so far. So we have a COVID MVP um, instance that is running. Uh, and it's in, been integrated into the national surveillance uh, ecosystem in Canada for the SARS-CoV-2. It's an end-to-end -end automated instance. We've done, done cron jobs to, to take data from the Viristic data portal, which is the national data portal for sharing this, uh, the viral data. Currently, it's, it holds SARS-CoV-2 data only. Um, so twice a week, we 
uh, process half a million genomes and uh, produce this visualization on the production instance. Uh, it's completely automated. That second part is the POX MVP, which is also running um, on currently on GISET data for, for only for research purpose in our own group, those people who have this access to the GISET. Um, that's a cameo group. And then um, the last part is the flu MVP, which is under development, because the idea is that as much as we want to develop this generic visualization and, and, and as much as we want to develop generic workflows, we also want to make sure that the characteristics of viruses are not lost. So we want to develop a um, additional plugin or additional way of visualizing flu, which is a segmented genome as compared to the SARS-CoV-2. So we are going to visualize segments by segments. Uh, this is currently under, um, under development. Uh, you can see a preprint on the QR code. We, we're hopeful to sort of submit the full uh, manuscript soon. And then there's a, another ISI. We had presented this at the, uh, at the conference that last year that gives a bit of a perspective on how this can be used into a more um, general surveillance system. And uh, with that, thank you very much. And I'm happy to take questions.